Do you like Pokemon? Yeah, me neither. But you're gonna like this game that we're talking about today. <laughs> Pal World. Activating flamethrower mode. Burn, motherfuckers, you! In the state of AAA gaming, it's bad. We're all gonna die. Begin this night. The gaming industry is slowly dying. Am I right, fellas? No. I remember being a kid playing Turok Evolution and being like, that was fun as. I just pinned that guy to the wall with a bow and then got eaten by a dinosaur. And now I have dreams still about getting chased by dinosaurs because of that game. Okay, this was a dumb idea, bruh. The introduction to Morrowind, one of the greatest introductions ever of any game. Halo Combat Evolved. <laughs> Games, in my mind, are very romanticized. I like games of yonder past. And it seems like nowadays, the gaming industry is kind of dying or just literally dying. Things have changed immensely. What's going on, everybody? I'm back again playing The Amazing Frog and the game's been updated and they added this thing called Frog Life to it where there's actual AI in the, the frogs. Or maybe I've just gotten a lot smarter so I can see the changes because I'm a, an adult man now, potentially. But a lot of people do seem to agree that the gaming industry is slowly dying with regurgitated titles coming out every single year. The triple A market is so saturated that nobody gives a fuck about COD. Oh. Nobody gives a fuck about Battlefield. The last two big old fat stinkers. But I will say, this has allowed for a lot of really unique small games to have kind of gotten legs that they normally wouldn't have gotten. For example, Lethal Company and Modern Warfare 3. Modern Warfare 3 came out, Lethal Company came out at the same time. I wouldn't even be surprised if Lethal Company had more people playing it every single day since its launch than Modern Warfare 3. Good! That's great! And that is thanks to the laziness of AAA Studios, the greed of AAA Studios. Not development teams necessarily, and honestly not even really studios. Gaming is about having fun, dude, and these fucking people are trying to ruin it. They're trying to take it from us. So I think that AAA gaming is basically dead, or dying, or in a really, really, really low point, the likes of which I've never experienced in my living life up until the game there were so many awesome games that you look at 2005's launch list look at 2010's launch list what about 2011 what the fuck and AAA titles were still cranking shit out then i mean we had a, a a new fallout every few years a new elder scrolls every few years now we've got elder scrolls online and starfield hey joe what do you think about the game so far i can breathe i can breathe on the moon and that pisses me off out of 10. todd howard what's wrong with you and the lies and the lies the sweet little lies. I guess we'll have to make our own game, all right? And we'll have to make it. I'm going to name it Morrowind 2, and I'm going to release it, and it's going to be, it's going to have Gia in it, but it's going to be spelled with a G. No, no, I'm wrong. So I don't know, I might be an idiot, but it genuinely feels like there's something wrong with the gaming industry. And it isn't developers, it's not a lack of creativity, it's not a lack of, uh, you know, an ability to express yourself or whatever. This is probably something that's happened in a bunch of other different fields that's now just happening. The game, money is too important. You can't make decisions to make a game fun, you have to make a decision to make game have more money make because of investor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this has ruined a lot of really popular franchises in my personal and honest opinion. Opinion, such as COD. I used to love COD. There's a new Naruto game. I used to love Naruto. Redfall. Five years ago, I would play and also f anything that Bethesda attached its name to. Now, I just get really sad. Starfield, by the way, another Bethesda game, another big fat stinking flop. I had a lot of fun with Starfield, like the first two weeks it came out, and then it just evaporated from my mind. I lost interest so quickly. Hell, we're putting that first aid seminar to work on you, huh? Sure. Hey, you gonna eat that sandwich? Thanks, uh, hey, buddy. that was my sandwich. I'm sorry. And this isn't the fault of the game studios not being talented, whatever. These, they're incredible. The, these people are insanely talented. Starfield, amazing. I love it, but it just sucks. Want to try that on me? Huh? Uh. Redfall. I don't even fucking know what Redfall was, to be honest. Hi. <laughs> all of these games were massively bombarded with terrible reviews and were all from AAA studios who have massive fan bases who continuously come back. They're loyal. They want to see more. 
but it seems like now it's the end. They're not going to be doing that as much. How many times can you get fooled by the same thing over and over and over again? Fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, shame on who? or whatever the th saying is. Fool me, we can't get fooled again. I've been fooled a lot by Bethesda, by the way. I feel just like personally misled. Speaking beyond Bethesda, things like Battlefield and Call of Duty were hyped beyond belief. The, the trailer for Battlefield 4. How did they do that? Black Ops 2, are you shitsing my dicker right now? As you can tell, we got a line going on from the GameStop. Oh my god, there's the care packages. I wish I would have gotten one of those. Those games d built and destroyed YouTube channels. You got celebrities and influencers and trailers. What the fuck? FPS Russia? Surprise, what a slave. Not good. Like I said in the past, I romanticized heavily, and it seemed like a completely different time than what we're getting now. You've got the glitches and bugs of Starfield. Uh, Jensen? Jensen, no! No! Also, did you hear that the modding for Starfield has essentially been abandoned already? I hope to, oh, I hope to God, and I hope and pray that they bring it back, but this is so bad. This is the end, dude. I don't want to see this shit. Jedi Survivor made people's computers explode. Was a fun game, but it was just fucking ass optimized. So this is the RTX 4090, okay? All right, right now it's drawing 355 watts of power. All right, we're gonna hit start. What the fuck? I mean, look at Cyberpunk. That shit was such a massive and insane misleading letdown. And now, now it's fun. Now they fixed it. They, it's it's pretty good. But once again, I, I haven't beaten it. I'm never going to beat it. I tried playing it again last month when the, or two months ago, or th however long ago that was when the new DLC came out. I'm not playing that game anymore. I just can't, I can't play it anymore. I just, I, it, I lost interest. This type of thing has become so bad that people just expect it now when a new game is released by a, a AAA studio. It doesn't feel like you can trust the, the the old classic developers. You don't know if you're going to be getting a finished game. If you're paying $60. You have no idea what you're getting. That seems insane. Plus the price of games are going up. And also they're moving to the game world where you don't actually, you don't actually own your games. They're turning Microsoft Game Pass into just industry standard of games. You can't even own the games anymore. Ubisoft, suck my ball sack, dude. I want to own my games. Activision Blizzard, Polish my pole or whatever. Don't actually. It'll probably hurt when you do it. This is the most brain dead, out of touch shit that I've ever seen. And that seems like what the gaming industry is now, the AAA gaming industry specifically, because I got some awesome stuff I want to talk about too. It's just out of touch. It, do they, they don't listen. They just want to make fucking money, bro. And somehow I just now realized this. <laughs> just kidding. I, I, it's been, it's been consistent and incessant and I feel like the problem has gotten worse, but at the same time, it's probably been this way for a long time and I just didn't necessarily realize. But trying to gaslight people into being comfortable with not owning a video game that they're paying for is fucking horrifying. Can you imagine spending $70 on a game and you don't even get to keep the game? I assume what they're referring to is some kind of Netflix-like service where you pay a monthly fee and then you get to play an entire library, something like that. That's not horrible, I guess. And Game Pass is pretty cool because a lot of smaller games make good money. Small indie studios make good money if their games are just chucked onto Game Pass. Game Pass is pretty cool. All in all, I feel like 23 was a pretty stinky year for games, aside from Baldur's Gate, which was fucking awesome. <laughs> I saved you. And I'm here to save you again. We had the day before. A quick note from the editor here. Just four days after its early access release, the day before was removed from sale on Steam and the developer announced it was shutting down. It was probably the biggest flop of 2023. <laughs> Got a one out of 10. No, the score graphic didn't get stuck. That's a one out of 10, folks. It was just a, the, the studio dissolved four days after the release of the game. It was terrible. It was ass, but they're still defending themselves on Twitter, which is awesome. What is going on? He's got the Omega Cannon. They were hoping to become the next in line for the massive AAA status by creating a game that became the most wishlisted game on Steam in 2022, which is a massive feat because Steam alone is a monopoly in and of itself. For example, if a game gets released on Epic, sometimes they fail just because 
the release on Epic. I'll talk about that in a minute. The day before was one of the most anticipated games of 2022, 2023. I was excited for it. And by God, that was terrible. Then you got the King Kong game. Rise of Kong is fundamentally disinterested in itself. A giant ape game that doesn't even care enough about what it's doing to make the ape feel giant. The Gollum game. Oh my God. Both of these games, Gollum and King Kong, I think are really good distilled versions of what exactly I think I feel in regard to me being like, oh my god, AAA gaming is so dead and horrible. Why, of all the interesting characters in the Lord of the Rings lore, would anyone want to play an entire game as Gollum? Why would one trade the solid action of prior games in this universe, like Shadow of Mordor, for busy work, uninspired and frustrating platforming, and bad stealth? It's not clear who this is for or what it was intended to achieve. The expectations that publishers put on the studio, the indie studio that made the King Kong game, which should have been like a AAA title because it's a license, it's a King Kong, it's like very very popular. Publisher expectations were too high and it seemed to absolutely fucking ruin it. And that game is just ass janky horrible. I mean, look at this epic cutscene. <laughs> it's a fucking Polaroid. Oh yeah, by the way, guys, go ahead and go to sour.gg. I have a candy company if you want to go support my small business that my family works for and it's really fun and cool and we love what we do and we do our best and it's cool and it's fun. I think there might be some flavors up there. If not, there's a golden ticket thing. We're selling golden ticket stickers. You buy one, you enter into a contest. You can leave a flavor idea and a design idea and the best three ideas we find, we're going to get those people to come together and make their own bag of candy. We're going to put their names on it and it's going to be awesome. You'll be able to forever be immortalized on a bag of sour strip candy. Whatever flavor you want that you can think of, anything. Buddha's hand, shit, fart methamphetamine. No, you can't do any of that stuff. Anything edible and fruity and tasty you can do. Go to sour.gg, hop into the golden ticket contest, or buy some candy and merch and stuff. We got a lot of stuff up there. It's a real business. It's actually really scary. I don't like being a, I don't like running a business. I don't like being a CEO. It's really scary and I'm really worried. I have a lot of people that rely on me now. It's terrifying. It's really terrifying. I had a lot of people before. Now I have way more. Now I've got way more. Ugh. Also, I think the Walking Dead game was a massive failure this year as well. This is, this is what a man does, Rick. I know what kind of man you are. You're the kind of man that rushes a game for money because you're a piece of shit and you suck and you're an asshole. A boring, ugly mess of a game to be avoided at all costs. The Walking Dead Destinies fails to do anything interesting with the story and the characters of the popular TV show it's based on. It's horrendous graphics, weightless combat, repetitive mission design, and as many bugs as zombies reduce destinies to the gaming equivalent of a biological hazard. Oh yeah, also Atomic Heart, big L, massive fucking giant L. It was in development hell for years and looked really good in the trailer. Man was born to dream, to do great things. Flying machine, space travel. And it was just really weird game and some people were pretty upset because of aspects of the game where ai generated are we anti or are we pro ai we, we, is it fine to speed up processes but not fine to replace the creativity of a human being is that is that where we're drawing the line at because i really don't know I, i'm i'm a little area of gray with ai i think ai is cool but also very 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 scary very scary, very extremely scary. This is kind of like the, the pinnacle of all the scary shit with gaming because now we've got ways to just replace people, fire people, and make games even more efficient to make, but also less creative and make them make more money and cut even more corners and just make, dude, the state of gaming, brother. I feel like the president of of games right now and i'm giving a state of gaming address and i'm just like hey guys we're fucking it up dude i'm firing this these these people the department of microtransactions firing all of them and honestly we're gonna tar and feather them and we're gonna put we're gonna put run them to the guillotine william wallace style i guess he was drawn and quartered and then put in every single corner of the united kingdom or england i guess that's what i would do if i was the leader if this was my gaming state of the union <laughs> address dude or you got games like chivalry 2 and dead island 2 just being dead on arrival because they weren't released on steam or they were released least on some alternative platform that isn't Steam. If, if you're PC gaming and you're not on Steam, if you're a game and you're not on Steam, what are you f***ing doing, dude? What are you doing, man? Dead Island 2, so terrible. 12 years of development 
15 hour main story. I love Dead Island 1. Shit was fun. What was that song? Shit, how did it go? Who do you voodoo, bitch? That's it. I remembered it. I love that song, dude. Oh, that game got me far up. Chivalry 2, Epic Games exclusive for a while. Eight shot. Now it's on Steam. Now it also has an incredibly small audience for a massive game. I guess the monetary incentives of being an Epic exclusive or an exclusive to the origin store or whatever, it makes sense. But being on a store determines relevancy just as much sometimes as if the game's well, uh, good or not. Chivalry 2 is fun. It's good. Three, two, one. Oh, shit. <laughs> There's also that Total War that was released on Epic as an exclusive. Total War Troy or whatever or something. I don't know. I love Total War. I have like 600 hours in uh, Rome 2 and I think 400 in Warhammer, Warhammer 2. Overall, people seem to be quite upset with games right now. That's the sentiment that I'm saying. That's the sentiment that I'm reiterating to all of you. I would like to know your thoughts down below. Now, I would also like to provide you with some other unique and interesting information. For example, Pal World. Nearing half health. Whoa, whoa, whoa! <laughs> Where did it go? You just zoomed into the sky! <laughs> Wait, what? The main thing is I go on Steam. I don't play AAA games anymore. I play indie stuff. I play. There are good AAA games, by the way. Baldur's Gate is a masterpiece. I love that game. I don't want to say every CRPG going forward should aspire to be like Baldur's Gate 3. Not everything needs to be nearly this big and ambitious or even this dense, but it is a landmark moment in the genre. And if I had to point to one paragon that I would like everyone else making these to take inspiration from, this is absolutely it. I can't think of any other good ones that were released this year. Alan Wake 2 was fun. That was solid. That was a good game. So, FBI, huh? That's so cool. Hunting down psycho serial killers and shootouts with the mob. You forgot the UFO cover-ups. What? Those are real? You guys hiring? Payday 3. Yeah, that was a fucking disaster. I just wish there was more loot in the proverbial vault at the outset and that Starbreeze would have used its years of experience to ensure that this was a more robust and far more stable launch. I'm confident Payday 3 could become the sequel we all deserve with a year or two of updates. It is a dry season. Yeah, absolutely. Games suck this year, but we got indie games and we've got smaller studios that have been knocking Knocking balls out of the park. Okay, guys. Knocking balls out of the park legitimately. And this is nothing new. Minecraft. I don't care if other people swear. I just personally don't. Don't worry. I won't swear. I'll say fudge. I'll freaking. I freaking don't know where I am. What the fuck? Stardew Valley. Stardew Valley is a beautiful, fun game that, when all of its parts are pulled together, make for a wonderful pastoral adventure. Subnautica. Uh, uh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> are just a few franchises, or I guess Subnautica wouldn't necessarily be a franchise, neither would Stardew Valley maybe, but they are things that have created a lot uh, of really positive stuff and great followings, especially FNAF. I mean, FNAF is his own fucking movie that actually was good, which is wild. And also Markiplier, I love him too, so. Oh, no, 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 no. You've got Lethal Company that just came out a few months ago. Slip your f***ing face wide open. It has one guy, one dude, 21 year old fella who made Roblox games, now makes that Lethal Company and it's a massive hit. It's beautiful, it's fun, it's unique. You're a little guy in a gas mask who travels to different territories and planets that are scary and dangerous and you have to do tedious work with up to four friends. Where'd you go? Oh, got increased levels of radiation. Oh yeah, I got radiation. We love the company. The company. <laughs> and you can also add mods. There's 200 pages of mods and there's cool lore. You're an employee of some mysterious company and you have to collect scrap and other valuable items and try to stay alive. It's awesome. Oh, fuck out. Ah. <laughs> So I found a turret. <laughs> <laughs> and there's terrifying monsters that you can interact with uniquely. One guy made this. I literally died watching this. Come on.
I don't know how to get it off. How do you do it? Wait, 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 wait. And it's like $15 or something. And there's really only a few ways to play. I mean, you can use a flashlight. We jumped across, did we not? Uh, no, you come from this way. Oh, yeah. From... We jumped across over here. That's already lost. You can stun the enemy. He's coming, he's coming, he's coming. No shot, I stunned you. Oh my god. <laughs> or you can just get killed faster. That Like, it's such a great game. Open secure doors. The fact he made it back to the ship is amazing. But at what cost? <laughs> no. What the f is the excuse of all the other publishers and studios. It seems like the last few years, and especially recently, people are waking up. They're becoming woke to the fact that you don't need to spend $59.99 and pre-order a game to enjoy yourself. And that includes not buying a fucking battle pass, Halo. Games just need to be fun and creative. Big drama, too. Pal World. That's a fun game. I played it. It's a good game. It's good. It's good. It's not great. It's good. It is fun. It is interesting. It takes a lot of things from games that I really like, and then it kind of smashes them up. And it also seems like it just is Pokemon as well. It seems like the game is also just Pokemon. This part's kind of tricky. See, there are a metric shit ton of people weighing it now, doing side-by-side -side comparisons, looking at the shapes, the polygons, the 3D models, everything. It's a hornet's nest because there is a very large group of people that are now deeply upset because they believe that Pal World stole designs from Nintendo. That shit is insanely fucking successful and came out of asshole nowhere. Pal World, developed by a company called Pocket Pair, is the biggest launch in Steam's history. Bigger than Elden Ring, bigger than Cyberpunk, bigger than any other game that has ever launched on the platform, period. And that's no small feat. But people are fucking mad at it on Twitter over its game design that is derivative of Dragon Knights or Poke Poke Monsters. <laughs> Pokemon. It's Pokemon. I made a joke and I called it budget Pokemon, but that's precisely what the game is. It's budget Pokemon with action combat, survival crafting elements, and a Valheim-esque type of world. Sure, there's some similarities, but I would rather play this. Versus this. Do a scratch. Little cat scratch right here. There you go. Come on, dude. Pokemon is ugly and dead now, bro. It's fucking glorified cock fighting. This shit, this is cock hunting and fighting. That's way cooler. Also, I'm pulling for a Pal World W here in regard to the fight between it and Pokemon. The same premise over and over again with just different skins and characters has to get old after 40 years. Or is that just me? And I love Pokemon, dude. I beat Emerald probably 50 times and maxed out my Pokedex probably 50 times. I didn't have any other consoles. I didn't have any ac internet access or anything. I didn't understand. I never got to... I never got to do anything aside from occasionally get my friends who had Game Boy Colors and but I used to have to connect and then they would send me Pokemon so I could complete my Pokedex. And I also got a Game Shark and I cheated a lot. I was a massive piece of shit. The community around Pal World though has taken two pretty interesting sides. People think that it's morally wrong that they're trying to copy Pokemon and the other side just seems so done with Pokemon that they're preying on Pal World's success. I'm on pro Pal World side. I think this shit's awesome. You give a, a, a fucking Browning M2 to a damn Jigglypuff, I'm playing that shit. That sounds fun as fuck. I can make a handgun. I just literally go and make a handgun. Okay. Mm. Okay, let's try. Let's see how this uh, this handgun works. Heads up to anyone thinking of supporting playing Power World who also cares about Gen AI issues. The CEO of that studio is full speed ahead on generative AI, frequently promotes it, and tries to push it in the studio. Even made a game focused entirely around it using our sugar. Yeah, true. I'm not a huge fan of generative AI, and the designs do look pretty simple. You could just use them in AI. So that, that's what people are saying. The accusations are that this game is just a weird generative AI husk that's ripping off the 
Pokemon brand, I guess. Power and absolutely stale Pokemon's designs. The game may be fun, but I will not sit here and pretend that they aren't art thieves. There's inspiration, then there's blatant ripoffs. I don't care about a big company like Pokemon losing money, but I do care about people supporting art craft. I, I agree wholeheartedly. That's a, that's a solid comment there. And yes, this does look derivative, especially this one right here. That's hard to that's hard to justify that one. That is a thing coming out of a plant. Also, that was a person who formed an actual cohesive thought from West Virginia. By the way, I don't actually think people from West Virginia are stupid and cannot form cohesive thoughts. That is a joke. Growing up in Northern Virginia, I have an embedded sort of banter rivalry with the tri-state area. West Virginia, Southern Virginia, better than them. West Virginia, Mama. much better than them. Maryland, might as well just evaporate. Pennsylvania, once again, though, that's all a joke, but I want to see people mad in the comments, all right? There's also a bunch of TikToks that I've been seeing. Imagine supporting the blatant theft and plagiarism that a studio does just because it's fun. This person's talking about how world, or so you might think, and then boom, it hits you with the Dragon Quest ripoff, which Pokemon just stole a lot of the stuff from Dragon Quest, or I guess stole it. A lot of these creatures are just normal creatures, though, too. Y y there's a bug in real life that looks, that looks kind of like this. You could argue that it's inspired like this guy here, but at the same time, it's like, come on, man. Man, it's like there's creatures these creatures are real like have you ever seen a dragon what are you gonna just make up a whole new dragon so some people are mad that pal world is ripping off pokemon then people are like well actually pokemon ripped off dragon quest or whatever that game is looks like shit by the way <laughs> i don't know i don't actually think so i think it looks great i really do do i say so much shit that's just not true because i am playing a character or something i don't know what the going on at the time and some people are mad that pal world's using ai but it's like well there's no evidence of them actually using AI. they use ai to come up with ideas and then they actually implement the ideas using whatever dude i heard that a fucking middle schooler did all the models for pal world that's what i heard i don't remember where i heard that but i heard that shit today and i forgot to save the link or write it down so that's just some shit that you can maybe like i heard the team was just a bunch of ragtag fellas from japan doing their best to to make Pokemon 2 or Dragon Quest 3. One thing is for sure that we can all agree on, the developers of PAL World <laughs> know what the public wants. The decision for the PAL World developers to make it Pokemon with guns was because they were worried the game would not be a global success unless they added guns to it because Americans like to shoot things. The gender neutral type A character creator was likewise because Americans sometimes want to make very ugly characters. Yeah, dude, Ark. Ark Survival Evolved. That's so funny. They just looked at Ark and they're like, oh, this is what Americans like. I like this. <laughs> 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 and then they looked at all the mass shootings and shit, and they're like, oh, interesting. Let's appeal to that. It's a lot like Ark. The game is a lot like Ark. It's weird. I'm about to die, Jordan. I'm gonna leave you by your lonely. Never. I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead. I'm dead. The biggest and most serious issue in all of this, in my opinion, is the AI thing, because like get people to start using AI to do everything, then it's just going to be a hollow. So and I'll use the birch and maybe I'll have it go around all the way. Oh, that is so smart. Just like that. I think AI is great, but I also think that it is important to not always rely upon AI. It's a serious issue. Media generation in general, it's a huge issue. There is apparently zero evidence of any AI being used in this game so far aside from some mumblings like i said of them using ai to like prototype character ideas and designs which that's completely valid instead of just having some guy and draw it 50 times just use stable diffusion and generate 80. i mean it's just way it's way easier and then use the human being to improve it that's cool that's smart so very little if any evidence of power world being created off of generative ai which that's exactly what i heard immediately right off the bat was power world is just pokemon but it's okay because the creatures were ai generated but now i'm hearing they're not ai generated and this guy on twitter is proving that they literally just stole them the power world meshes are not node for node the same but they're really close hashtag pokemon the sobel one is weird because it almost has to be a rip right they're kind of similar, but at the same time, the Power World fan is pretty different. Geometrically, Sobel is the second pick. This one also has telltale sunken geometry aspects to it. Then this person slipped up and said that they were exact copies, therefore claiming to their audience that Power World did in fact steal, which that was a terrible idea. And then they had to rectify the situation by clarifying they shouldn't have used the word exact. This poor fellow was regretful of his flippant use of the word exact. People are very upset. They look fucking very similar, dude. Okay, who's wrong? It doesn't matter if it's not stolen. It still looks the same. Who are who's who, why are you saying it's stolen? Why the f do you care? Just play the game if it's fun. It's f a whole hell of a lot more fun than Pokemon. I'll tell you that much. I just don't want it to get destroyed with a lawsuit because 
Game Freaks, Pokemon, Nintendo, they're all pretty litigious. And they're all known for being massive pieces of shit sitting at the very tippy top of the pile of kind of what's wrong with the gaming industry or the way that it appears. Just in case you were wondering though, this, this fellow who said that they were exact ripoffs and then apologized and said that they changed the models and scaling them and everything. What was the reason for doing all this? Well, this tweet. I am doing this because I think it's disgusting how much Power World glorifies the animal abuse. This is insane, man. It's a video game. Him. And these animals are not real. There's nothing that looks anything like these animals. The chances of this being anything close to animal abuse is a less chance than this being a direct and blatant ripoff of Pokemon. Someone responds and said, the info is cool, but isn't Pokemon literally sanitized cockfighting? Hey, that's what I said earlier. Or did I say that? I don't think I did. I said something about cockfighting though. I was talking about cocks. So we get it. We get it. It's a bit of a grift, bit of a bit of a Twitter grift to, to start stuff. I don't really know. Crazy argument. Bizarre. I don't know, man. It just kind of clarifies that a lot of the hate that Pal world is getting is from people who are just salty and unable to explain their anger. I hate this game. It's AI generated. No evidence. I hate this game. It's a direct ripoff of Pokemon. Oh, well, it's not a direct ripoff of Pokemon, but I don't like it because it glorifies animal abuse. You know who else glorifies animal abuse? Me. I'm glorifying animal abuse right now, specifically in pal world. Hmm. Remember how you were lazy, bro? Remember that? <laughs> ah, wait. <laughs> It's totally cool for games to be inspired by other games. Fun games. Fun games, man. Indie game, $27. No, no MTX. Soulless cash grab. Geek gaming, 10 out of 10. Game breaking bugs, bad fame weight. $70 plus paid DLC. Yeah, that's embarrassing, bro. Pokemon is so fucking lame, but they still sell a lot of units. I don't understand how they sell so much. It's crazy how well it does. It's sad. It makes me upset. Pal World did do extremely well, though, with 7 million sales in five days. A roadmap revealed. That's incredibly impressive. $30 price tag. That's really good, man. That's really, really, really awesome. And honestly, half my friends list right now on Steam is enjoying Pal World, and the other half is playing dwarf fortress if i click on this this dwarf is now specialized this dwarf will only do tasks that they are explicitly checked to do so rimtar over here has been specifically assigned to the minor group over here friends with a lot of autists i myself bit of the autism by that i mean i have autism like genuine or i'm neurodivergent or whatever people say now lethal company pal world just show that graphics aren't important anymore people don't care about graphics that much graphics are important a little bit but people just don't care about this shit battle bit another game excellent game fun fucking game great now for today's war crime of the day today it goes to fronsk for his brutal treatment of this prisoner Fuck you. People want good old fashioned fun. They want bang for their buck. They want money. They want a studio that they can support that cares about fun and good game, not just money, money, money. Money, money, money. In my opinion, all in all, it's been a really bad year for gaming, but there are absolute lights at the end of the tunnel. There are really fun games that I'm so glad to throw money at. Lethal Company, for example, Baldur's Gate was incredible, and that's not a type of game that I would ever have thought I would ever play. I'm not into d and I don't like that much. You know, I haven't historically liked that type of thing, but I gave it a chance and I loved it. That game was so much fun. I didn't beat it, unfortunately, but I might play it again. Maybe. I'm not sure. But it was fun as fuck. It was great. Pal World is fun, dude. We just need more good games. It makes me so, so, so sad. We're in an era of fart and anal expression, and there are terrible decisions being made by AAA game studios. I think the AAA model is just gonna go out the window soon, and these big studios are gonna start actually taking chances because of Lethal Company and Pal World. I genuinely believe that these games and the success of these games are going to make people look. They're going to turn heads. It's going to get things to change. At least I hope and believe, because also the fucking dangers of AI are gonna change shit up a lot too, but I think there's a sun rising on the horizon. All right, guys. I think, I think I think I can see, I think I can see good times coming. And also, what if I started a game studio and made a game? What if I did that? I'm not sure I could. Yeah, I couldn't. I'm not gonna do that. Press like if I should.